The right to repair. You've probably heard this phrase within the past two years, and in this video I'm going to break down what the right to repair actually is and how it affects you as a consumer. I'm going to break down the manufacturer arguments and the consumer arguments for and against right to repair. So what is it? Right to repair is the belief that if you own something, you should be able to repair it yourself or take it to a technician of your choice. Like if your car needed brakes, you should be able to take it to anyone you choose or be able to do it yourself. It's the concept that everyone has the right to have reasonable access to the manuals, schematics, parts, and tools to service products. So if the screen broke on your phone, you should be able to buy that screen from the manufacturer. And products should be designed in a way as to make repair possible in the first place. For example, not making wear items like batteries or tires unreplaceable. So really what right to repair is asking is, who owns what? Does ownership of a product mean you have the right to fix or modify that product? And if not, then who actually owns it? The major industries being affected by right to repair are the farming industry, the whole consumer electronic industry, medical industry, automotive, and the military. As it stands now, manufacturers are able to pick and choose who can buy replacement parts, who can repair that product that you own, and what can be repaired on the product that you own. There are many ways that manufacturers do this, but the one I'm going to focus on now is the most common one, which is serialization of parts. So what is serialization? Serialization is when a manufacturer locks down a part using software encryption so that that part can only be used with that specific device. If you buy a brand new iPhone and you swapped the screens or you swapped the batteries, you would get a notification in your settings saying that the battery or the screen aren't genuine. But Apple and Apple's authorized repair centers have the software needed to reprogram these parts and to repair them to the phone to make them function correctly. So you get a message in your settings that says something's not genuine. Who cares? Doesn't really matter, right? Well, this part right here is also serialized on the iPhone 10 and above. It's the earpiece speaker that also contains a proximity sensor and the flood illuminator that scans your face for face ID. Now when this gets damaged, usually by water, the phone will get itself into an infinite boot loop. So it'll just show the Apple logo shut down, show the Apple logo shut down. I've had so many people come to my store with this problem that I started making a video series on it on my YouTube channel. In multiple cases, they came straight from the Apple Store, where the Apple Store told them the phone could not be repaired. In one case, they even wiped the customer's data. And in all these cases, all I had to do was unplug this serialized part from the phone, and the phone booted right up. But I can't repair this phone properly because I don't have access to the software needed to repair the part. Therefore, the customer loses Face ID permanently. Apple will not attempt the repair if they see signs of water damage, and they're the only ones that can repair it. And you might say, hey, don't buy an iPhone. Well, unfortunately, Samsung and Google have done the exact same thing in regards to serialization. On this Samsung phone, you can't replace the fingerprint scanner without disabling it if you update your software. If you don't update your software, your fingerprint scanner will still work. Again, this isn't just phones and computers, but tractors too. John Deere does this to their parts, as this farmer explains. We do not have the ability to hook up a computer to a tractor to diagnose it, to repair it, or even to activate components that we may buy to put on that tractor. Another way manufacturers control who repairs what is controlling the replacement parts that they manufacture. They have no obligation to sell replacement parts, and they can determine the cutoff date for their product. This receiver is, for the most part, a perfectly functioning receiver, okay? The, the, what this does is it receives satellite signals from GPS satellites. TCM in this is broken, okay? It's not functioning. What we were told by Deere is, well, we don't support this anymore. So essentially what they did was they forced us to buy a new unit because they won't support this anymore, and we can't get the repairs for it. And this happens in every industry. I recently had a customer come into my shop with a Razer laptop that cost $4,000. The screen was broken on it. Razer refused to sell me a screen and refused to repair it themselves because they didn't manufacture the screen anymore. The laptop was two months old. And GM recently announced they will no longer be providing replacement battery packs for their Chevy Spark. This vehicle was manufactured between 2014 and 2016. This means when the high voltage battery inevitably fails, Owners will have zero options to repair their car. None. Their vehicle will never drive again. 
Those are just a few examples of the state of repair as it stands with manufacturers. Now I'd like to discuss why consumers want right to repair. The first reason being convenience. Consumers like having choices. They like convenient things. They want to be able to bring their product anywhere they want to have it repaired. If you're forced to repair it through the manufacturer or their authorized repair facilities, you could be waiting days, weeks, or even months to have your product repaired. Which brings us into our next reason, the time-critical nature of repairs. Consumers should not have to wait an unreasonable amount of time to have their product repaired. This is especially so with medical devices, such as wheelchairs. Recently, Colorado passed a bill that allowed consumers to repair their wheelchairs, instead of having to wait days, weeks, or months for their things to be repaired. In the military, time is of the essence. When something breaks, they can't afford to wait for somebody that's authorized to fly in and repair their product. It could be the difference between life and death. The New York Times and Popular Mechanics brought this to light in their articles, outlining the struggles that soldiers face in the field having to wait for authorized technicians to fly in to repair a part that they could have done in five minutes. The way it stands now, there is no ability to get a second opinion when everything has to go through the manufacturer or their authorized technicians. When you bring your car to somebody, you like to get a second opinion. Consumers believe they should have the option as well when it comes to all of these products and devices. Earlier I made an example with an earpiece speaker on an iPhone 10 that had water damage. This is a video I made with a customer that went to the Apple Store and was told that their phone was unrepairable and that they could not get the data off of it. Apple sold this customer a new phone and was unable to get any data off of his old phone. The customer owned a small business and didn't have any of his data backed up. And it turns out all I had to do was unplug that damaged earpiece speaker. And of course I couldn't actually repair the phone because that part is serialized. Because this customer got a second opinion and came to me, I was able to save all of his priceless data. But the manufacturer prevents me from properly repairing the device. My friend Rich made a video where a customer came to him for a second opinion because Tesla quoted him $16,000 to repair what was essentially a broken valve on a battery pack. Tesla insisted that the entire unit had to be replaced. However, it was just a single valve that was made of plastic, which was a design flaw, that needed to be replaced. Rich ended up doing this repair for $700. Another customer had six bad battery cells on his Tesla Model S, and Tesla wanted $22,000 to replace this because they were going to replace the entire battery pack instead of just the single cells that have failed. Rich was able to do this repair for around $5,000. The amount of money saved by these customers leads us to our most important reason that consumers want right to repair, and that is cost. The cost of repairs through manufacturers is notoriously high. But when consumers have no other choice because manufacturers lock down their devices, they can charge whatever they want for repairs. We'll use Apple as an example. For iPhone screen replacements, Apple charges $329 for an iPhone XS Max screen replacement. I can do it for $140. And Apple never budges on the prices of their repairs. For example, this phone from 2016 cost $129 for a screen repair. You can buy the entire phone for $75 on eBay. And it's the same with the medical industry. This laser cost $70,000. Yes, $70,000. There was a loose wire on there that needed to be soldered on. The company's technician cost $300 an hour with a two hour minimum. I was able to do it for $80 in five minutes. These obscene costs are also prevalent in the military. As my friend Lewis points out in his video, the comments were damning, with multiple people giving instances of where something could have been repaired for much less, or how the taxpayer can save money if they just maintain the equipment that they're given. And this is echoed in the FTC's report on right to repair that they released in May of 2021, where members of the military testified that the lack of right to repair is obstructing their missions and inflating costs by having to hire contractors to do simple fixes. So what's the manufacturer's excuse for not allowing right to repair? Their first excuse, and their most common one, is security. They claim legislation demands access to source code, which will make devices vulnerable to hackers. When Massachusetts was voting on a right to repair bill in 2020, they even went as so far to insinuate that if manufacturers release diagnostic software and tools that they use for their vehicles, that this would somehow lead to sexual assault. And this was during the second right to repair campaign that Massachusetts has had. We previously passed one in 2012, but the manufacturers were using a loophole to prevent wireless diagnostic software to being available to independent shops. And in both cases with both bills, voters overwhelmingly voted in favor of right to repair. 
Right to Repair proponents counter this manufacturer argument by reminding them that Right to Repair only calls for the software tools needed to diagnose and repair equipment, and those tools consist of embedded code, not the uncompiled source code behind it. Authorized repair centers already have this software, or they can access it remotely. They also like to remind manufacturers that serialization does not equal security. Preventing a phone screen from working on the same exact phone is not something that's a security concern. Preventing a sensor from being installed in a tractor is not a security concern. Another argument that the opposition uses against Right to Repair is that third-party repair shops can't be trusted with customers' data. And Right to Repair's response to that is, it can't be trusted by the manufacturer either. There are multiple instances of Apple-authorized repair shops and Apple facilities leaking customers' information. In one egregious case, two employees of an Apple repair shop leaked a woman's private videos onto her Facebook page. Apple was sued and they ended up settling for a few million dollars. And there are just as many instances of dealerships taking customers' cars out for joyrides. What it breaks down to is, customer data is no more vulnerable in a third-party repair shop than it is at a manufacturer's repair shop or an authorized facility. The other opposition argument is manufacturers want to make sure the customer is getting the highest quality repairs for the device that they've made. And this is understandable. I would personally want to know if a part inside of my product was replaced with an aftermarket part or a genuine part. However, the quality of these repairs relies on the quality of parts the repair shop can use. The manufacturer prevents shops from purchasing genuine, high quality parts, Therefore, they create this scenario in the first place. Also, just like mechanics and contractors, there are good shops and bad shops. Customers have multiple tools to determine good from bad. Some of the worst repair attempts I've seen have come straight from Apple. And I'm sure at least one of you in this room has had a bad experience with a manufacturer. And you may have seen that Apple has announced that they will soon, supposedly, make available a self-repair option for customers to buy and replace screens and batteries on their own devices. Now what they fail to mention is the price of the parts they will sell the consumer and the fact that independent repair shops still can't buy parts from them. Google and Samsung have followed suit and announced the same program. This is an attempt at avoiding right to repair being passed because if it is they would have to offer replacement parts at reasonable cost as there is language in the legislation that directly addresses that issue. And how many of us are really going to repair our own devices? Sure, I can replace the brakes on my car, but I'd rather bring it to somebody who does it for a living and already has the parts in stock. The last opposition argument to right to repair, I'll use as an example, is that people will get hurt if they repair their own stuff or if unauthorized people repair your stuff for you. This argument usually comes up when it comes to medical equipment. However, in 2018, the FDA actually investigated whether additional regulation of independent repair was appropriate. Instead of finding safety issues like the manufacturer lobbyists claimed, the FDA's report found that third-party repair carries no additional risk and that both they and manufacturers provide high-quality, safe, and effective servicing of medical devices. Remember that FTC report I mentioned earlier? They concluded, there is scant evidence to support manufacturers' justifications for repair restrictions and that the FTC will pursue appropriate law enforcement and regulatory options, as well as consumer education consistent with their authority. President Joe Biden issued an executive order citing this FTC report as why right to repair laws need to be a priority in his administration. I hope this video has given you a better idea into the ethics of right to repair, both for the opposition and the proponents. Feel free to watch my other videos on right to repair on my YouTube channel, Salem Texperts. Thank you for watching.